Hello everyone, this is Saurabh Kumar and I welcome you all to my video series where we are covering the syllabus of Certified Ethical Hacker. Today we have reached to part number 80 where I am going to talk about Asymmetrical Encryption or Asymmetrical Cryptography. In last video we have talked about Symmetrical Cryptography. So let's have a look on it. As we have discussed in last video, we have seen that there are two types of cryptography or encryption we can have that is Symmetrical or symmetric encryption or asymmetric encryption. So as I explained in the last video, symmetric encryption uses same key to do the encryption as well as to the decryption or to do the cipher and decipher. Here asymmetric uses two different different key. So first of all, let's try to have a look on it. What exactly the asymmetric encryption is all about. So when we talk about asymmetric encryption, first of all, it uses different key to do the encryption and decryption. So a separate key is used for decryption, separate key for is used for encryption. So let me first of all try to show you with the graphical presentation here. For example, we are having let's say that connection of multiple computer. Let me assume even three or four computers. So this is computer A, this is computer B, this is computer C and this is computer D. When you use asymmetric encryption, each of the machine will generate two type of key. One is known as private key, one is known as public key. So C will also have private and it will also have public. It will also have private and public. But what it is going to actually do is uh, when we talk about it, that each of the machine is going to have the private key with himself and the public key will be shared with others. So for example, this guy will have, this guy will have, this guy will have, they all will have the public key of computer A. So for example, here we have A, B, C, D computer. So we will have the public key of A, we will have public key of C, we will have public key of D, C will have the public key of A, B and D. D will have the public key of a, B and C and A will have the public key of public key of B, C and D. But when we talk about private key, private key A will have only his own, B will have the private key of his own, so private key only it will have of B, this one will have private key only of C, this one will have private key of only D. So always the private key is al always kept with himself and then the public key is shared over the network. So everybody, whoever is connected on the network, they all can have the public key. Now how does it work, work actually? So let's assume that guy C want to send some data to D. What he will be doing? So C, because he already has a public key of D guy, so he will use that key the D public key to encrypt the data. So C will be using a public key, public key of D to encrypt the data. And once the encryption will be done, the data will be sent to the D guy. Now, even if the data because of any reason, somebody else will receive, for example, it will be received by A or it will be received by B or it will be received by C other people they don't have the private key of D. That's why only and only D will be able to open this particular data. Only D is the one who had the private key of D itself. So that's how it also maintain confidentiality. It maintains the authenticity as well as it maintains uh, so many different different kind of security. So here you can see that basically when we talk about asymmetric encryption, it using two different type of key, one public key. So all the computer, they use public key of other computer to encrypt the data to whom he want to send. And then the guy, when he receive, he use his personal private key to decrypt it. So this is how the communication happens when we talk about asymmetric encryption. So now we can have a look here. So here it is saying the asymmetric cryptography method has been proved to be secure against any kind of attacker because even attacker get the data, they don't have the private key. Nobody will have the private key except the guy himself. So in asymmetric cryptography, like sender encode the message with the help of public key and the receiver decode the message by using random key generated by sender's public key. 
so this is how actually it is uh, going to work now so now uh, when we talk about any kind of asymmetric or symmetric encryption they all works on the basis of cipher they all use the cipher methodology cipher technology so what is the cipher actually is and how many types of cipher are that is what now we are going to discuss in this video so when we talk about cipher first of all it was having uh, in a old days there was a classical type of cipher where they were having substitution cipher and trans transposition cipher when we talk about in modern day we are having public and private cipher which is nothing else but it is same like you have asymmetric and symmetric encryption and then on the based of input data we also have two type of cipher one is block one is a stream cipher so we are going to now have a look on each of them one by one with the details so first of all let's have a look what is cipher is whenever we talk about now cryptography whenever we talk about any encryption or some mechanism cipher is cipher is nothing else but it is like a algorithm it is a mathematical concept which used to do the encryption which is used to encrypt the data so any kind of data can be encrypted and generally uh, when we talk about uh, old days they were just having so many different uh, uh, kind of basic mechanism of encrypting the data for example uh, a b c d z this character they have given the number like a will be known as a 1 b will be known as a 2 c will be known as 3 4 5 z will be known as 26 like that so if for example the message is uh, hi and or maybe uh, the message is abc so uh, rather than sending abc as a plain text what they were selling sending that 1 2 3 so this is basic me uh, mechanism of cipher has begin and then uh, nowadays obviously there are so many different different types of cipher mechanism are which people are using which companies are using so message can be easily encoded based on any of the example can be decoded as well on the same method so whoever the receiver will receive he will also use the same method that okay the data i have received is 1 2 3 the meaning that the plain text is going to be a b and c now when we talk about the classification of cipher as i told you in a classical way there are two type of cipher one is transposition one is substitution so let me describe what is the transposition is and what is the substitution is so first of all let me begin with the transposition transposition cipher means that very easily that for example i have a message something like hey how are you maybe this is the right message which i want to send to somebody when we use the message mechanism when we use the method where i want to use transposition what it is going to do actually is they are going to write them or maybe they use any of the method any a small software or something where they write it like that and then out of this they make the word now like this is going to become one word this one is going to become the second word and this one is going to become the third word so it is going to be like h h a y then it is going to be e o r o and then it is going to be y w e u so this is the now cipher text this is your plain text so plain text is being converted into such kind of cipher text by using such kind of mechanism that is known as transposition cipher now when we talk about the substitution cipher the method is different so when we talk about substitution cipher it is something like that for example the message is again hey how are you so now in substitution they don't combine them and make a separate word what they do actually is they use some value to add or subtract or to uh, maybe change the value of the particular alphabet so maybe here maybe they use plus 2 what does it mean that every character what you see here you just add two value there for example it is h so it will be having j because h h then i then j so plus 2 is j here we have e so here it will it is going to be e then f then g so it is going to become g like that then it is having y so after y what will be two values so x y z and then after z it becomes a so it is going to become a here we have again h so it will become j here we have o so o p q so it is going to become q then we have w so x and y 
here we have a so it will become c here we have r so s t then we have e so it is going to become a b c d e f g so it is going to become g here we have y so it is going to become again z and then a then here you take again o then we have 2 plus in o meaning that o p q so it is going to become u q and then we have u so p q r s t u v w so that is how the text is being converted or encrypted this is my plain text which is hey how are you when it is being converted that becomes the cipher text and this plus 2 value or plus 3 or plus 5 or minus 5 minus 3 this is known as a key so if this kind of mechanism is being used to convert a plain text into the uh, cipher text this kind of cipher is known as a when we categorize it in a uh, uh, when we classify it uh, on the basis of uh, classical cipher we are having this one as a category of substitution cipher so here we have uh, looked out at two type of cipher one is transposition one is substitution but when we talk about the modern cipher the condition has changed rather than just calculating it on the page and pen like the way i have shown you they use some different mathematical mechanism and after that it becomes again two category one is private key encryption which is nothing else symmetric key algorithm and one is public key algorithm which is nothing else it is asymmetric key algorithm the one which we discuss one we discuss in last video one we have discussed recently in this video itself so this is the two category on the basis of modern cipher and then on the basis of input data how much data it takes and how it is being converted into cipher text on the basis of that it is having two type again one is block cipher where it refers to an algorithm operating on the basis of block or a group of bits of fixed size uh, with an unvarying transform action specified by symmetry key then it will be known as a block cipher and if you have a different kind of cipher mechanism where refer to symmetry key cipher this is obtained by combining a plain text digit with a key stream uh, any random key stream or something which is also known as pseudo random cipher digit stream so this category will be known as a, a stream ciphers so on the basis of uh, when we talk about input data again we have two category of cipher one we have is a block cipher one we have as a, a stream cipher now the next thing a uh, very interesting word i am going to explain in this video that is known as gak the full name is government access to key generally uh, we all know that every com company big organization they have some kind of um, cryptography mechanism they are using they are using different different types and all those things even they are using asymmetric what is mandatory nowadays is that you uh, as a company have to share you have to share your uh, confidential key or your public key plus your private key also to the government also generally this is mandatory for in the almost all of the country what does it mean actually that government access the key means of that software companies will give a copy of all the key whatever key you are using in your private organization what for actually this happens so that actually at least uh, enough of the key that reminder could be cracked to the government so this key actually when you share with the government it is still con confidential and they promise that they will never use it this key they will never use this key to uh, crack or uh, uh, decrypt or decipher your any of the data until unless they don't get permission from the court they don't get a uh, permission from any of the uh, court so th th that meaning that any of the company whoever is using cryptography they have the encryption they do the cipher they do the encryption uh, before they transfer the data but whatever encryption key they use they have to share also with the government of that country so that in case if anything goes wrong or right they may have a uh, Uh, they may go to the court to get the permission and then after that they will be able to use those keys to decrypt your data because everything every communication which is happening it should be under control of the government at the end so that's why government is always looking for your public key and private key whatever key you are using and you have to share the key with the government which is known as gak 
government access to the key so to the government this issue is similar like you are uh, having giving the ability to uh, uh, you know tap your phone call you may have seen in so many number of movie that government is tracking uh, what exactly the guy is receiving the call and making a call what he is having a conversation and all so that is again a legal task they can only record when they have the permission from the uh, court or maybe they have the permission from that area um, uh, of uh, department of defense and such kind of things so uh, similarly uh, company also need to share their key with the government and that is known as gak government access to key so i have added some of the information related to gak you may uh, pause the video and you can have a note of them you can go through this information there i have added like a key isro encryption system provide decrypting capability to certain authorized personnel under uh, a stipulation condition and can decrypt the data whatever uh, he want or government wants then some other information i have added which you may go through it then the next point is uh, when we talk about other mechanism that is being used for encryption so there are many number of encryption algorithm which can be used to do the encryption of the plain text and those are c4 those are aes ades rc4 rc5 rc6 dsa rsa md5 ssh so these all are so many different different method or uh, different different mechanism which can be used to do the encryption to do the cipher so you may go through each of them you can grab the a lot of information about each of them and that will be helpful for you when you are planning to become a ethical hacker when you are planning to have uh, a career in security field so in this video my main agenda was to uh, explain what is asymmetric encryption is what is asymmetric cryptography is but i have added also some other information like gag or uh, some other kind of um, uh, cipher so i hope this video was informative for you all and i would like to thank you for watching